Have you ever wondered if using a riser cable will hurt your gaming performance? Well, today we're gonna find out. Stay tuned. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes with members across 150 different countries. With categories like film and video, music, web development, leadership, and even lifestyle, there's definitely something you can find to learn on Skillshare. I'm currently taking a course by MKBHD on his entire process of shooting YouTube videos. From beginning to end, this course has included some great tips in helping me to up my YouTube game. Also, if you don't have time to sit in front of the computer, you can take Skillshare with you by using their mobile app. I'm actually using this quite a bit. There's always something new to discover on Skillshare, with new classes launching every week. And because Skillshare is ad-free, you can focus your attention on what matters the most, and that's learning. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below, or just enter the code CYBERCPUTECH, will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Now, on with the video. Well, I'm sure there's a lot worse things you could do. We spend a lot of money on our graphics cards and manufacturers go to a lot of work to make them look good. However, once installed in your system, you can only see the top of the card. You have all this GPU goodness hiding in the shadows. So many people decide to use a vertical mount. This not only allows you to see the GPU, but it also helps fill out the bottom of the system. Personally, I really like the look of vertical mounts, but the problem is a vertical mount isn't possible without a riser cable. So you have to ask yourself, does using a riser cable hurt your graphics card's performance? This is a question that I've been thinking about for a while. I mean, the whole point of a gaming system is to play games. That's why we spend so much money on this hardware in the first place. But are we leaving performance on the table by using a riser cable? Well, the only way to find out is to test it and see what happens. So for this, we're gonna be using the vertical mount adapter for the Lee & Lee O11 Dynamic Mini that I have my gaming system in. I'm going with the PCI Express 4.0 mount that they offer, even though my motherboard doesn't support 4.0. The reason for that is because the 4.0 riser cable are built much better and they include a lot more shielding from interference. When PCI Express 4.0 came out, motherboard manufacturers needed to redesign their PCBs in order to handle the higher bandwidth the 4.0 provides. The traces on the motherboard needed to avoid interference. This was a difficult job and that's why 4.0 motherboards cost so much. So if it was difficult for motherboard manufacturers to go such a small distance, then it's a whole new level trying to extend your PCI slot out further with a riser cable. So even if we're on a 3.0 motherboard, we might as well take advantage of the extra shielding in a 4.0 riser cable because ultimately our goal is to not have any performance loss. And I believe the best way to do that is to always use a 4.0 riser. Also, you get the added benefit that if you upgrade in the future, you already have a compatible cable. So let's get this vertical mount installed in the system and then we'll see how it performs. Now that we have the vertical mount installed, it's time to run some benchmarks on this thing. I'm gonna be doing all of these benchmarks with the GPU overclocked to the same speed that we tested in the last video. 
In fact, the overclock scores from that video are gonna be our baseline for this video. So, let's get into the benchmarks and see if we hurt our performance. I'm gonna be going through these benchmarks really quickly and then we'll talk about the results at the end of the video. The first benchmark we're looking at today is Heaven. Without a riser cable, Heaven was able to average 143.7 FPS. Once the riser cable was installed, we averaged 143.6 FPS. That's a loss of only a tenth of a frame, giving us a loss of 0.07%. I would call that firmly within the margin of error. The next game we're looking at today is Dirt Rally 2. Without a riser cable, Dirt Rally 2 was able to average 146.2 FPS. Once the riser cable was installed, we averaged 147.6 FPS. This is about a frame and a half improvement, but with only a difference of 1%, this game is also within margin of error. The next game we're looking at today is Red Dead Redemption 2. Without a riser cable, Red Dead Redemption was able to average 69.2 FPS. Once the riser cable was installed, we averaged 66.3 FPS. This is the first game where we saw a considerable decrease in performance. We lost 4.3% of our average frame rate. The next game we're looking at today is Cyberpunk 2077. We're going to benchmark this game with and without RTX. Without the riser cable installed and with RTX turned off, we were able to average 92.4 FPS. Once the riser cable was installed, we averaged 92.9 FPS. That's an increase of about a half a frame and well within margin of error. Without the riser cable installed and with RTX turned on, we averaged 37.8 FPS. Once the riser cable was installed, we averaged 39.4 FPS. That's an increase of 4.1% to our average frame rate. The next game we're looking at today is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This game was also tested with and without RTX. Without the riser cable installed, and with RTX turned off, we averaged 137.3 FPS. Once the riser cable was installed, we averaged 136.8 FPS. This is a loss of 0.4% and well within the margin of error. Without the riser cable installed and with RTX turned on, we averaged 135.6 FPS. Once we installed the riser cable, we were able to average 135.4 FPS. This is a difference of 0.1% and well within the margin of error. Now, as you can see from the benchmarks, a riser cable didn't affect performance that much. However, there were a few outliers. Both Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk with RTX show results that could be considered outside of the margin of error. However, the one thing these two games have in common is that these results were both based on benchmarks with a relatively low average frame rate. When the average frame rate is lower, a difference of a few frames can make a much bigger percentage difference. For instance, Red Dead Redemption scored a 4.3% loss in frame rate. However, that was less than 3 FPS. Considering the fact that it was a gameplay benchmark and not a synthetic benchmark, I would consider 3 FPS kind of within margin of error. In the case of Cyberpunk, we actually got an increase of performance of 4.1% when RTX was turned on. That would be a great selling point of risers if it made RTX performance better. But again, that 4.1% was only two and a half frames a second. The game was also a gameplay benchmark like before. So two and a half FPS is still within margin of error. Another thing that these two games have in common is that during the benchmark, the GPU was maxed out. Both of these games were GPU limited. So if we were to take that into consideration, the riser cable very well may be affecting performance. But I believe that the average frame rates were close enough to conclude that a riser cable doesn't seem to affect your performance significantly enough to even worry about it. With that said though, if you like how easy it was upgrading this case to a vertical mount, then check out this video where I review the Lee and Lee O11 Dynamic Mini that we upgraded today. It really is an awesome case. Have a great day.